We are here on the Isle of Mull, um, on my family farm. We, this is my grandmother, Chris, and the, on the farm is my granny, my dad, my uncle, and a variety of other members of the family. So we're dairy farmers here on Mull, um, but we make cheese from all of the milk from our cows. Um, and Granny's going to tell us a wee bit about how we got started with cheese making, what we do here on the farm. Actually, what we were going to do was do liquid milk for delivering in the town. So um, Garth and Matthew came first because we were stuck in England milking cows and working really hard, milking our cows three times a day and doing it all ourselves and nobody actually wanted what we were doing because there was too much milk in 1970. The farm had been empty for a long time and we brought five cows. Five cows up from Somerset? Yes, we brought, brought five, five cows up from Somerset in our, in our truck. Mm -hmm. And we had an ordinary truck with no loader or anything like that and it was extremely we had to find somewhere to unload them. <laughs> well, there was no ramp. There was no ramp on the lorry. <laughs> yes, they just had to jump yeah. in and out. Well, we had to back up to a bank. <laughs> okay. We backed up to a bank actually out here, and they got out. But they, it was all very, you know, yeah. in those days it was all very makeshift because I had one or two lessons from a friend who was a cheese making because we came from a cheese making area. Mm -hmm. So pasteurisation came in by law in Scotland for liquid milk. Mm -hmm. So we knew we had to pasteurise and we had to have a little pasteuriser. Yeah. So we set up a little tiny, teeny pasteuriser and we, we, we bought second-hand tanks and second-hand everything. And we milked the five cows and we actually cartoned the milk into little cartons. A simple little operation, but we knew that we would have to make cheese because yeah. we planned it. We had to be a reliable supply mm -hmm. to actually could be considered seriously. We couldn't say, sorry guys, no milk today, we haven't got enough or we haven't had a cow, you know. Um, so we knew that that was the ambition, was to have enough milk so that when things were, when we, when it was a busy day, we could still have enough milk. So it grew from, so it grew from liquid milk to making cheese with yes, surplus milk? We, yes, our cheese is actually particular to this farm and this island. We were making cheese in the autumn, mm -hmm. okay, so through the winter, and then selling it in the spring. And it was a thrill, actually, that was the main thing, was we had to make a hard cheese because we had to make something in the autumn that would go through to Easter. So then we could sell it when the visitors came back. Or travel. And when we had, I can remember when we had six cheeses to sell, we put it in our milk truck, because by that time we got a little milk float, you know, to take the milk round the town. And we set off uh, to the big wide world. We went to Glasgow and Edinburgh and we had samples and they didn't want it because it was too strong for them and... Um, it was unpasteurised and it was too strong. Anyway, they, they sniffed at it. Anyway, so we kept going because my sister lived in Gloucester and we kept going all the way down and then we came to Reading, near Reading, Wells store it was. There was a man there who had written a book about unpasteurised cheese. Anyway, we stopped at his shop and gave him a sample and he said, oh, honey, I'll buy everything you have everything you have. So then he, it was just great because he was so pleased with it and he bought everything that we had. So then we came home and we started again to mm. gather up some cheeses and then set off again into the world. To do what we did, to start from a bucket and gradually it would be, it would be hard because of the, it wasn't quite, yeah. there weren't so many regulations I think and yeah. so many difficulties <laughs> that there are now. In 2000, um, by that time, I, we were making twice a day. Do you remember? You probably don't remember that. But I was making two lots, two shifts in the in what is now the cheese cottage. I was okay. making two shifts of cheese. The cartons were leaking. We needed either to invest a lot of money in the equipment, mm -hmm. and Dad, your dad, had to stand by the carton machine all the time with a spanner to keep the you know to keep stop them leaking. So we, it was either, we had to choose between yeah. either cheese 
or invest a lot of money in new cartoning equipment to keep going. By that time, we were doing the co-op, we were doing Carl and Tyree, we were doing Back to Loch Island and the whole island. So, so it was a big round, a big commitment to get that liquid milk mm -hmm. out there in the morning. And sometimes we had to work all night. It was a big, huge commitment, the liquid milk. So when we decided to build a new dairy and make cheese and go put everything into cheese, that was the big breakthrough, really. Now we're milking 130 cows, but this is, we can't graze, and that is the number, our maximum for grazing. So it's only a small, small farm mm -hmm. around here. So we can graze that number, but we ha uh, have tenanted another bigger place, which is, which is fantastic for us, where we can make site, we can make all our winter grass, put mm -hmm. our young stock, our dry cows. The herd is closed, so we don't, sell, we don't sell cows out and we don't buy cows in, but we do occasionally buy an, a different bull, obviously. All our milk goes into, into our unpasteurised cheese, and we, the reason it's unpasteurised is that we want the basic flavour of the island to reflect into our, into our cheese. So now we make a hard cheese in Isle of Mal, we call it Isle of Mal cheese, and now Hebridean blue, which is the blue cheese. The cheese that we're making here are large yes. 25 kilo yes. cheeses yes. Yes. That, are, that are very intense, like intensive to have to, you know, it's a very physical yeah. job to make work. those cheeses. We, have, we do it by hand, yes, but we have a few machines to help us, like stirrers and cutters, because we're dealing with 5,000 litres at a time. So we're making 5,000 litres of milk into cheese maybe four times a week. Predominantly at the moment we are selling mainly to um, wholesalers all across the UK. Yes. Um, a lot of, uh, you know, and our cheese is ending up in kind of specialty yes. cheese shops yes. and delis, farm yes. shops um, and yes. in restaurants and stuff. So yeah, predominantly wholesalers who distribute yes. it on um, and then we are, we do direct sell. Yes. The rest of the cheese and that's we can sell a certain amount on the island but it's a limited market and the summer season is a lot yes. better for selling locally um, than the winter season but there's a lot of local restaurants and cafes and stuff that we're yes. very lucky also buy our cheese and use it on a lot of their menus yes. <laughs> so tourism for us isn't necessarily our primary business but the island is very heavily based around tourism yes. and the, industry, the biggest, you know, one of the biggest industries on the island yeah. is tourism. And we're very lucky that we've got a place, we've got a place that we can bring tourists yes. to. You know, the cafe that we're sat in has been, has been up here for 30 years, we were just talking about yes. 30 years. And it's been a, we run it as a cafe for that entire time. No, not. R on and off. On and off. On and off. On and We've off. run it as a cafe um, intermittently, <laughs> yes, intermittently. For, the, for the last 30 years. Yes. Um, so we've got the cafe and the farm shop here, which has been increasingly popular over the last few years. Very. People are, love. you know, it's, it's great to be able to welcome, bring people onto the farm yes. and hopefully they can learn a little bit about farming and cheese making. Yes. Um, and, and, and it's and lovely it's, to show them round. It's lovely to show them round and it's a you know, for us, we can actually sell our cheese here for people to be able to come onto the farm and pick up a piece of cheese that's made on the farm by from milk from our own cows. We've actually made the cheese on site, we matured it here, cut it here, packaged it here. We've done everything with it here and people can come into our farm shop and they can buy that piece of cheese. So eventually we'll have a spirit to sell in the shop as well because yes. we're working on building a distillery. So the process of making the spirit that we're going to make is, in my understanding, um, so the way from the cheese making is, as we just said, is a waste product. It's full of sugar, full of lactose, and the little yeasts will eat the sugar and make alcohol. Yes. And we will then ferment, no, sorry, we will then distill the alcohol yes. into a spirit yes. of some kind. Now we're doing, we're inviting cruise boats, which are now starting to come up, up the Sound of Mull and come onto, onto the island. And, and now we're taking people round in, in great numbers. And so we've got to, We've got to turn, we're going to change and we're going to make what used to be my old living room where I'm living into a, a, a tasting room and a, and a visitor's room so that we can have tours 
still going on at the same time as we're running a cafe just next door. That's what you have to do, is make the most of what you have. You, that's what the message I would give, is to make the most of, of what you have. Your grandfather used to say, there's nothing so sure as change. Yeah. And it's absolutely true that you've got to welcome that and, 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 and embrace it in, in whatever way you do.